My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's July 2nd, 2023. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony.
There will be details coming soon for our back-to-school event at Carlton Manor. Be on the lookout. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this revival. We thank you, Lord, for this summer revival 2023. We thank you, Lord, for this series, Summer Revival 2023. Speak to the hearts of men. Speak to the hearts of women. Speak to the hearts of young people. Help them to turn toward you. Help them to turn towards the Lord. Help them to repent of their sins. Help them to come to understanding of you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. And those that are already saved, if they need to go up to the next level in Christ, push them, pull them, inspire them to go to their next level in Christ. Push them, pull them, inspire them to go to the next level in Christ. Speak revival today. Speak summer revival today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture of the day is taken from Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, in the King James Version. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him, not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the Far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to Cash Tag Rockaway Cathedral. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Welcome, welcome. God bless you. Welcome to the Rockaway Cathedral. My name is Pastor Marlon. So today we start our series. Today we start our series on Summer Revival. We start our series on Summer Revival. All five messages in the month of July will be an eye toward revival. Repentance, salvation. Salvation and repentance. That's the theme for Summer Revival. Uh, first message is going to be called the Multiverse. First message is going to be called the multiverse, but I do have a, I don't know, a disclaimer. We, we're going to be talking about somebody uh, who uh, just found out he's a great scientist. Just found out he's uh, basically a pedophile. That's what he was. Turns out I didn't know that until recently. So if we talk about this particular scientist. We're just talking about his scientific work. Um, we're not endorsing in any way his personal, it turns out, criminal behavior you know, back in the 30s and 40s of Europe. So we're not promoting his criminal behavior. Um, you know, we've talked about people before who've had uh, significant problems with the law, like Mike Tyson. So we're not promoting this particular person's criminal behavior. We're just talking about some aspects of his career in, in, in science and physics. So with that said, <clears throat> today's message is called The Multiverse. Today's message is called The Multiverse is part of our series, Summer Revival. It's part of our Summer Revival series. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony. Oh uh -huh. 
Jesus, I surrender humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsake and take me, Jesus, take me. Good morning, good morning, God bless you. Welcome to the Rockwood Cathedral. Today's message is called the multiverse. Today's message is called the multiverse. Uh, the scripture can be found in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. It's part of our summer revival series. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse, 20, verse 21. King James Version, please stand for the renewed God's holy word. Today's message is called the multiverse, part of our summer revival series. He began at the reading of God's holy word, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So far the scripture. Let's speak through your servant today and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So there's a movie called, it's a 2018 movie. Not the one that's out now, a 2018 movie called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's an animated movie, it's a cartoon movie. So they had voice actors. So they had Laura, Luna Lauren Velez as Rio Morales, Lily Tomlin as Aunt May, Mahershala Ali as Uncle Aaron, Jake Johnson as Peter Parker, which is the original Spider-Man. And Shameek Moore is Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man. Uh, so we're going to talk about Into the Spider-Verse in a minute. But um, I want to talk briefly about a scientist, an Austrian physicist named Erwin Schrodinger. Again, we said what he was like. He was a brilliant person, but in his private life, he was a pedophile. So we're not going to try to hide that. But that was part of his private life. It's uh, confirmed that he was a pedophile back in, I think, the 30s, 40s, and 50s uh, in Europe. But he's known scientifically for two things. No, he's known for getting the Nobel Prize in physics in 1933. He's also known for a theory called Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat is a, what you call a thought experiment. Goes a little, it's, it's based on quantum mechanics, which I'm not going to get into. So it's based on this. You have a cat in a box. You have something in a box that's going to kill the cat cat gets killed. One person opens the box, the cat is dead. Another person opens the box, the cat is alive. Again, it's based on 
you know, some quantum mechanics kind of stuff like that. But it's a thought experiment, and a thought experiment is not science, it's science fiction. Um, scientists, they come up with an idea, they publish it in a paper, they say this is true. Other scientists look at it and they say, hey, the guy's wrong. So he gets tossed. That's not science. Another guy comes up, a woman comes up with an idea, puts it in a paper, everybody checks it out. And they say, hey, that's true. That becomes science. Science is something, science is something that you could prove. A thought experiment is like science fiction. In fact, the reason why I bring up Erwin Schrodinger is because he's kind of like the father of science fiction. You know, science fiction could be tied directly to Erwin Schrodinger. It has an idea about something. But the question is not whether or not it's true or not. You can't prove the cat experiment. But you could say, well, how could you prove that it's not true? So science fiction is, is uh, something that people have fun with, right? That's how when you look at Star Trek, you see people walking around speaking English on all these crazy planets and nobody's flying off and there's always water and food and day and night. You know, we know scientifically there's no planets so far that anybody has found that could support human life or any other life. So science fiction doesn't really care about science. It's a thought experiment. Science fiction all, always often violates known scientific laws. You can't fat, fly faster than the speed of light, but Star Trek, you fly, you know, two times the speed of light, 10 seconds, because science fiction is fun. It's a thought experiment. It's not true, it's not scientific, it's something that people use to think about stuff, to have fun, but it's not real science. All right, let's look at the scripture again. Romans 1, chapter 21. Romans chapter one, verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. I have three points today. Point one is Peter Parker. One is Peter Parker. So Peter Parker, if you follow these things, is the original Spider-Man, young kid, underachiever, uh, elite high school in Queens, New York. His parents are dead. He's being raised by his aunt and uncle. Gets bit by a spider and through a series of events becomes Spider-Man. So everybody knows Spider-Man does this, Spider-Man does that. So in this movie, the, the multiverse, it's about a, a young kid, a half black, half Latino, called Miles Morales. Again, same kind of kid. He's in high school in, in Brooklyn. He is being raised by his mother and father. His father's black, mother's Latino. So something like that. I think his father's a black Latino, but anyway, that's him underachiever, brilliant kid. He gets bit by a spider. He becomes Spider-Man. So he's kind of like, you know, not telling anybody, kind of figuring it out, you know, just kind of trying to figure out how to be Spider-Man. Because in his world, his universe, there is a Spider-Man. There's a Peter Parker who was known as Spider-Man, who was a known figure in New York City. But nobody knows who Miles Morales is. So he's running around, swinging, swinging, swinging. And then all of a sudden he sees like this big villain shows up uh, in some warehouse. And then Spider-Man goes in and fights him, right? And I think, uh, you know, somehow Spider-Man sees Miles Morales and tries to save him. And as, he, as he's trying to save him, the, the bad guy mortally wounds Peter Parker. Peter Parker is going to die. Spider Man, Peter Parker, Spider Man, and then he's acting, and Spider is going to die. But he says something interesting to Miles Morales. He says, Hey, uh, I know that there's this portal called the multiverse. If you go through this portal, you can go to another universe, get that Peter Parker, and tell him to come back into this universe so he can fight the bad guy. That's what Miles Morales does. He goes into a, some kind of portal. He goes in through the multiverse and goes to another Earth, finds that Peter Parker and brings him in. And that Peter Parker and Miles Morales team up and they fight the bad guy. 
But the premise is that there's another earth or there's multiple earths, right? So Miles Morales on this earth, there's another one like him, same age, same parents, same city. But his uh, his future, his, his background, his future may be different. Same guy, same DNA, same age, same parents. But his, the outcome of his life may be different. So in Miles Morales' world, the Peter Parker, Spider-Man, straight up guy, straight Spider-Man, local hero, does his good job. The Peter Parker in the other universe, in the other universe, is kind of like overweight, cynical. You know, sometimes he saves people, sometimes he doesn't. You know, kind of not really, he, he has the Spider-Man powers, the ability, but he's not this trim superhero kind of guy. He does what he can, whenever he can. He's got a problem with his relationship, think he's divorced or about to get divorced. So Miles Morales has to go get that Spider-Man, convince him, you know, to, to actually do a good job and they come back. But the notion is, the notion of the multiverse is that there are multiple universes involving the same people, but the people may be living slightly different lives than the people on this earth, which of course is a thought experiment. It's science fiction based on Schrodinger's cat. It's a thought experiment. It's fun. But in the in the movie, The Multiverse, right, that's the premise of it. Peter Parker in this world is gone. So they have to go to another Peter Parker in another world to bring him here to team up with Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man, to go after the bad guy, try to contain him. Point two, the human mind. The thing about the human mind, we, you know, human beings are really tremendous. We, we really have, not only are our bodies very efficient, two arms, two legs, we can walk upright, things like that, joints and fingers, we could see and hear and smell but it's really our brain that sets us apart from all the other creatures on the earth. We really can do a lot. You know, we have clothes, we have planes, buildings, submarines, ships. All this comes from the human mind. We have a lot of imagination. We could think about, we could think outside the box. Human beings are just really innovative and creative. So the human mind is, is really very special. But it also sometimes could get us into trouble. The scripture says something very, very specific about sometimes how the human mind could be. It says, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. You know, the scripture, if you look up Romans 1, this chapter, it's a very hard-hitting, very, very hard-hitting. I, I gave, like, the least hard-hitting parts of it. At least the Holy Spirit directed me to that. But he says that humanity has no excuse to not to glorify God. I mean, the fact that God exists in Romans 1 says should be obvious to everyone. Just walk outside. Look up into the sky. Look around. The fact that God exists the fact that God had something to do with the creation of the earth and universe is obvious to everyone. It's sort of like this is like a, something that's ingrained in every human you know, that has a sound mind. Of course, those people don't have a sound mind. The fact that God exists, the fact that God created the universe, the fact that God in some form is still around, the fact that God is still around and active in the lives of all humanity is something that all humans have in common. Now, some people have this religion, that religion, some people have no religion. But what the scripture says is that all of us have some kind of knowledge of God, some kind of sense that there is a God out there. You may like that God, you may like that sense or not, but we all have that sense that there is a God out there. And what, and what the Romans says, what the scripture says, what Paul is saying through the Holy Spirit, is that the human mind has the ability, even though they know about God, to live a life and not glorify him as God. We, we, we can say God is great and glorify him. God is good and glorify him. 
God is love and glory, or we could not do that. So he's talking about the category of humans, human mind, category of humans that all of us know that there's a God. All of us have a sense that we didn't come out of nowhere. We know that this is the only planet that anybody has ever seen that could support this kind of life, any kind of, not only this kind of life, well-developed life of humans and all sorts of things. There's no planet so far seen anywhere that supports any life of any kind. And even though we know internally there's a God, there's, there's the human mind. Some people, many people choose not to glorify him as God, choose to not be thankful to God did not glorify him as God, not thankful to God. And when those two things happen, when we live our life without glorifying God, we live our life without being thankful to God, this is what could happen, not always, but this is what could happen, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Vain, vanity, arrogance. You could become, if, if you think that this is, that you don't, you know, God exists, but we don't need God, right? God is not really relevant. I may or may not, there may or may not be God. If you refuse to glorify God and be thankful for, to God, you could become arrogant. You could become arrogant. And also you could become foolish, making rash decisions, not really understanding things, just going down this rabbit hole of, of making irrational choices and decisions all because all because in our human mind we don't glorify god and we don't thank god glorify god and honor him for all of this and thank him for being in and part of and responsible for this human experiment on this planet point three the multiverse there are people who live a life of arrogance. There are scientists, right? Brilliant people because they neither glorify God nor give him thanks. That just, when they think about and lecture and, and talk about, you know, science and humanity, right? They just don't even think about God whatsoever. And then there's other people who believe in things that are just not scientific, right? And when you believe in things that are not scientific and have these debates and, and arguments about it, you end up kind of going away from God. For example, you know, aliens. You know, there are aliens who build Egypt and aliens who build the Aztec civilizations and aliens who are flying around. And then they say to you, well, you can't prove that I'm wrong. And you know what that is? That's not science. Science means you have to prove the person right. Or the person has to prove himself right and let other people look at it. That's science fiction. It's a thought experiment. Hmm, what if this? What if that? That's Star Trek stuff. Science fiction says you can't prove that it's not true, but that's not science. That's science fiction. That's a thought experiment. And the thing about science fiction is just have fun with it, right? The multiverse, the thought about Peter Parker being in this universe, Peter Parker being in another universe. There's being multiple universes with different Peter Parkers with different outcomes. That stuff is not provable. That's not science. But you know, when Disney makes a movie and, and when all of these other companies make movies about these things that happen, just go to the movie and enjoy the movie. Read the book and enjoy the book. Thought experiments and science fiction are the basis for some of the great movies that we have. They're the basis for all of these amusement parks, right? Because these books, Brothers Grimm and Frankenstein, all of these books that are based on science fiction, they're thought experiments. And, and people have a lot of fun. People have a great time. Alice in Wonderland, Mickey Mouse, 
mice don't talk and 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 uh ride bikes but in the mickey mouse movies there's the mouse talking english <laughs> riding bikes right you have mighty mouse a mouse flying you know so so you know science fiction thought experiments right are fun and that's what it should be but but what the scripture says is that people who don't glorify god and don't have and don't thank god their hearts become foolish. So they start talking about things like aliens and living on other planets and coming up with also the Loch Ness Monster and uh, the Bigfoot and all of these things that are not science. They're not provable scientifically. You can see that there's a lion and trace the lion's DNA back to this and the cat's DNA back to this and the dog's DNA back to this. That's science. And this mountain is this high, and you want to climb the mountain. That's science, right? That's real stuff. That's somebody comes up with an idea, people prove it, gravity, right? The theory of relativity, that's science. But this aliens and, and Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster, instead of being fun and cool and, you know, something you can have fun with, some people whose hearts are darkened, people who are vain in their imaginations, you can come up with entire scientific theory, the arrogant ones, and leave God out. You could live your life and have these little things that are supposed to be fun become a real thing. And you're out there looking for aliens. That's foolishness. Or coming up with this whole theory of science and all of that and not saying anything about God, not glorifying God, as if, this stuff just came out of nowhere. That's arrogance. The human mind, if you don't glorify God, the human mind, if you're not thankful for God, to God, can become arrogant or become foolish. And when you watch movies like the multiverse, take it for what it is. It's entertainment. Science fiction violates all the laws of science and math and physics, and it doesn't care. People aren't all speaking English in these other planets. No beings live in other planets. You cannot fly faster than the speed of light. You cannot levitate on the earth in a, in a bat suit. I mean, those things are impossible. And science fiction doesn't care because science fiction is fun. It's entertainment. Yes, yeah, it's a way for people to make money. But when we go to these things, we don't want, you don't want to think, think about how tough your life is this week. You don't want to think about the fight you had with your wife, the fight you had with your kids, the fight you had with your boss, that blown tire that you got. You know, life can be rough. And when you go see these movies, man, it just gives you an opportunity to escape. I love science fiction movies. And many people do love science fiction movies, but that's what it is. These are thought experiments, things that you could have fun with. Don't let yourself go down the road of thinking that this place was created without God. Don't let yourself go down the road and start thinking these crazy ideas that are unscientific are true because then you become arrogant. If you think that this is all here out of nowhere, then you become foolish. If you're believing all of these stories about these things that happen, don't do that. That's Romans talks about that. Romans talks about that men and women. Men, well, think about it. children are just children, but men that have these thoughts, women that have these thoughts are either arrogant or foolish. You cannot go down the road. God exists. God created this universe. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. And be thankful to God. Be thankful to God. You and your human mind, you, you could be, you could glorify God or not. You could be thankful to God or not. That's, that's how it is. That's how 
who you created by God, to have that kind of ability to live life one way or another. The main thing, body of Christ, in all your ways, glorify God. In all your ways, be thankful to God. Put the multiverse in its place. View, think of it as a great afternoon out with you and your kids. Read those little scientific books. Think of it as a week or a month of just living in an alternative universe where you could have fun. All of these shows and Game of Thrones and all these other shows on TV about all these things and monsters and, you know, it's, it's science fiction. It's a thought experiment. Keep it for what it is. Keep it for what it is. Don't build your life on a thought experiment. Don't build your life on something that's foolish. And don't live your life as if we are here all by ourselves and God had nothing to do with it. This is the time of revival. This is a time where people need to glorify God. This is a time where people need to thank God. This is a time where people need to glorify God. This is a time where people need to thank God. This is where the Lord wants us to be. He created this earth and he created us and he gave it to us for our benefit. So let's live the life that God intended for us. But even as we do so, let's continue to glorify him. Let's continue to thank him. Let's continue to glorify God and let's continue to thank God. That's it. You're here today. You've never experienced, you never confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You've never confessed Him as Lord and Savior. If that's you, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I know you came for me. I know you lived for me. I know you died for me. I know on the third day you rose again from the dead. Today I confess that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. Therefore, today, I'm saved. My name is Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockaway Cathedral. Building God's kingdom in you. Going victory, going peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We pray that you are blessed by the word brought to us today by Pastor Marlon Curtin. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service. Be sure to check out our website for more information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you're dismissed from this service but never dismissed from God's presence.